Hello students, I hope you are doing beautiful mathematics. In this video, we will talk about combinatorics. I will share with you all the strategies and the problem solving techniques that are useful for IAQM American math competitions and similar contests. I will also share some books that you might be using for combinatorics. If you are a student of Chinta and if you are taking one of our, our live classes, then make sure to use the combinatorics problems from our software Padini 8. It's it's a very good set of problems about the counting principles or combinatorics. What is it about? Well, you usually have this sort of a scenario. You have a set of things that you want to count and then you find a clever way of counting that set. I'll give you one example. Suppose there is a tournament with 1500 teams in the Andromeda galaxy. There is a tournament of 1500 teams and it's a knockout tournament so whenever two teams play the game ends in winning and losing so there is no draw someone wins someone loses and as soon as you lose the game you are out of the tournament this is the rule of the game now the question is this how many matches will be played in the tournament before the winner is declared so this is a very interesting example because Soon I will show you, you can solve this using a very simple but beautiful technique in combinatorics. But this actually brings the point home that combinatorics is about counting a set of things. In this case, the set was the set of matches. So whenever you are starting the problem, always think, okay, what is the set that I'm counting? That's the first question. Okay. Now. Let me quickly go into some of those clever counting techniques. The fundamental one is of course multiplication and addition principle. When, when do we use multiplication principle? When the two things are happening and they are interconnected. I mean they equally sort of impact the main event and they have to be simultaneously happening. So one good example, if you want to go from a city A to a city B, and there are three different choices of roads, road one, road two, road three. And then you want to go from B to C, B to C, and there are two choices, uh, let's say W1 and W2. This is a typical scenario when you use a multiplication principle because for going from A to C, you have to both go from A to B and B to C. So there are three choices for the first case, two choices for the second case, you multiply them. If you are thinking about this for the first time, it may be helpful to actually write down all the cases. What are the cases? You, go, you can go R1, W1 or R1, W2. Then R2, W1, R2, W2. R3, W1, R3, W2. So these are the six cases. That's why you multiply. An addition principle means that we have an either or scenario. Either or scenario. So maybe it goes through road or through water. And then you can do the two cases separately and then add them up. So multiplication principle and addition principle, these are the two fundamental principles in combinatorics. And you should be very, very much conversant with both of them. Okay, the second thing is known as combinatorial coefficients. These are very powerful problems. Uh, if you know this, this is the symbol of n choose r. This is the number of ways to choose r things out of n things. n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. That's the formula. But in practice, you rarely use the formula. Whenever you see something like this, in a very good contest, here is a hint. Do not use the formula. It can lead you to a lot of trouble. Instead, use the definition. What is n choose r? n choose r is the number of ways of choosing r things out of n things. So I'll give you an example. Here is a very interesting fundamental identity for binomial coefficients. This identity says that n choose r plus n choose r minus 1 
is equal to n plus 1 choose r. Why is that? This is sometimes known as the Pascal's identity. Why is this true? Well, there is a way to argue this. What you do is that suppose you have n plus 1 objects. You fix the first one, a1. You want to choose r things out of these n plus 1 things. Okay, then in your choice, in your choice, either a1 is present or a1 is absent. Only one of these two things can happen. Either a1 is present or a1 is absent. Okay, if a1 is present, now you have n things remaining from which you have to choose the remaining r minus 1 things. You have already selected one, a1. So from the remaining n things, you have to choose the r minus 1 objects. That is the definition of n choose r minus 1. Or a1 is absent, so you have to choose all the r things from the n things. That is n choose r. So n choose r minus 1 or n choose r or so addition principle you add right so n plus 1 choose r is equal to n choose r n choose r minus 1 so you have a uh, an argument to prove this notice that i did not even use a formula i just used plain english language it's like an argument but it's perfectly valid as long as you are using the definition of the combinatorial coefficient so second type of problems are combinatorial coefficient problems okay now comes some strategies of counting there are four strategies that i will mention one is bijection one is inclusion exclusion one is pigeonhole pigeonhole and the fourth one is recurrence relation. Okay, maybe my spelling is a bit off. Please excuse that. So there are four types of strategies, general strategies to attack problems which are combinatorial in nature. Bijection principle means, suppose you want to count a particular set but somehow it's very hard to count. So what you do is that you count another set which will logically have the same number of elements. That's the twist. That's the hard part. Remember the Andromeda galaxy problem that I just talked about. How many matches? So suppose this is the set of matches. You want to count the set of matches. It's kind of hard to count. There are a lot of rounds in the tournament. It's kind of hard to count. But you know what's easy to count? The number of losers. In a 1500 tournament, 1500 team tournament, if there is one winner, there are 1499 losers. And each loser lost only one game because after losing the game, they're out of the tournament. So every match has a unique loser so by counting the losers you count the number of matches that's it so this is a bijection principle you come up with a set which has exactly the same number of elements as the set that you want to count and this second set is much easier to count inclusion exclusion is doing the addition principle in a very clever way so that you first take everything then you throw away some of the things that's not needed. Then you, then you might have thrown away some extra stuff. Then you bring things back and so on. So adding and deleting successively. Adding and deleting and adding back. You can do it several layers of times. One famous problem is uh, the derangement problem. What is the derangement problem? Well, suppose you are uh, five people are there and they have five umbrellas. So person one, person two, person three, person four, person five. There are five people. They go to a party and there are five umbrellas. U1, U2, U3, U4, U5. 
and they put the umbrellas outside the room and they get inside the room to do the party okay and all of a sudden there is a power cut so no one can see anything so person one comes out person two comes out person three person four person four everyone comes out they randomly pick up the umbrellas so person one who came in with per umbrella one may have wrongly picked up umbrella two like this so everyone picks up an umbrella without looking the question is in what proportion of the cases can all of them pick up the wrong umbrella all of them picks up the wrong umbrella this is called the derangement this is a complete loss loss of arrangement i would say so this is a very famous problem and this can be solved using uh, inclusion and exclusion principle turns, turns out about 30 to 35 percent of the cases will be like that okay so the third one is pigeonhole principle pigeonhole principle is very famous it stands on a very simple idea, but the problems can be really twisted. Now, what is the idea? The idea is this. Suppose you have four holes and if you have five balls, let's put them as stars. You want to throw the stars inside the hole. Since you have more stars than holes, then what you can conclude is there is a hole which is more than one star. There is at least one hole, one hole with at least two stars. Okay, so that's it. But this simple principle can run, run a havoc. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing how difficult the problems of pigeonhole principle can be. And the recurrence relation, well, it's a little bit twisted, but it's sort of like this, that the main collection that you are trying to count, it is recursively built. So you count the cases of ones and twos, then you add them up to find the case of three and so and so forth. Uh, it's hard to explain without actually showing a problem, which is we don't have time to do that in this video. But you can watch some other videos on recursion relations. Uh, one good example, it's not really a combinatorics problem, is the Fibonacci series. Which is recursively defined. Recurrence relations and recursively defined uh, sequence of numbers, they are a little bit different. But uh, the words, wording is a little bit same. So, And the basic idea is kind of same. So I gave you this example. But... Uh, recurrence relations are very powerful okay so once you have all of these things I will also mention three ideas three or four ideas which are at the fringe I call them fringe ideas very powerful ideas for elementary combinatorics but they are not as often used as the ones that I've just talked about the first one is a subject in itself, it's called graph theory. The second one is invariance relation, it is at the heart of mathematics. The third one is extremal principle. And the fourth one is the principle of infinite descent. So I'm not going to explain all of these things, I just wanted to throw these words at you so that when, you, when I suggest the books, you can actually go ahead and look into these ideas from the books, okay? So I will be actually referring three books to you. The first one is Mathematical Circles. It's a fantastic book to get started with. You can also add to that Hall and Knight, the chapters on binomial coefficients, because that will give you some practice. The second thing that I would, I really like is principles and techniques in combinatorics it's a very beautiful book with a lot of example problems and a lot of exercise problems and the third book that i really like is problem solving strategies by arthur angel i just named the write the name of the author so in this particular book, you will find plenty of beautiful problems on these fringe topics as well. Invariance, extremal principle, infinite descent and so on. And if you really want to learn graph theory, Harari's book is really nice. Okay, so plenty of books and plenty of ideas. I hope you like this video. 
if you learned something let me know i hope you are doing beautiful mathematics every day if you are a student of chinta make sure to go into the panini 8 software and practice problems for 15 minutes every day it will help you to build a habit and it will also help you to track your progress which areas you are strong which areas you are not so strong so that you can take help from the teachers okay all right thank you everyone for joining in i'll see you in the next one keep on doing great mathematics bye